when I saw what software was really about and what problem solving was really about, that's kind of when I got hooked. And the greatest advice ever given to me was, if you want to work in software, you'll find a way. What's going on, guys? Happy holidays, wherever you are. Hope you guys are doing well. Quick shout out to today's sponsor, Monday.com. Thank you so much for supporting the channel and letting me do what I do, how I do it. If you guys don't know what Monday.com is, it's a team management tool for small teams, large teams, so you can be a couple people working together on a tiny little indie project, or you can be a huge company like Uber, McDonald's, NBC. They all use it. It's pretty cool that Uber uses it. They're not a startup anymore, but I still think it's pretty cool. I've actually been uh, playing around with it myself. I got the, the trial and I've been testing it. I'm gonna do a video comparing other kind of team management tools out there, but I really like it. I, I like the interface a lot. It's simple, intuitive, and I like how you can see who's working on what, how long they've been working on it, deadlines, task updates, everything. It has everything you need. So I'll put the link in the description down below. Again, thank you so much for supporting the channel. I was trying to find a way to like finagle this and like talk about uh, David Goggin's Can't Hurt Me book that I just finished reading, which was so good. If you guys don't know, I'm trying to read one book every single week. I really like David Goggin's. Uh, he came out in Living with a Seal by Jesse Itzler. That's like one of my favorite books of all time. Really kicked my it made me want to work out a lot and then when I found out that seal was David Goggins I was like oh I gotta learn everything about him so anyways if you guys haven't read that book um, you know it talks about pushing through the struggle and that's kind of what today's video is about I do a lot of different interviews with different types of people usually they're more like zero to hero I made seven dollars an hour now I make 150,000 a year or something like that but what happens in the middle what about those people why don't I interview those people and that's what this video is going to be so his name is Kyle Kyle is an example of the grind reel uh, this is a video of what it looks like to be in the process of learning code on the job and working his way up in the company. He's totally self-taught. He got a job as a cable guy, worked his way up to a systems analyst, and then keeps moving his way towards development. His company really values entrepreneurial spirit, and he figured that out, and so now he just takes on any single task that he can, and... You know, he has the same kind of struggles as any junior developer would. He didn't do, I don't have anything related to a dev job, now I'm a junior at dev job. He worked his way up slowly to become a developer, and now he has all this exposure to all this technology, and he has realistic expectations of what goes on at work, which is kind of a lot more than you would get as a junior on the job because he's already on the job. But he has the same kind of feelings as a junior developer. He doesn't feel ready, he broke something at work, oh no, what's going to happen? And so this is just coming at how you could do this from a different angle, working your way up inside of a company, moving towards a position that you want from an unrelated position. That's what he kind of did. He kind of created this position, learned Python, SQL, IT skills, Linux. He's almost DevOps. He's not quite DevOps. He's not quite a developer. He's in this middle position and he just keeps working his way towards that, but he's getting on the job realistic experience. In my opinion, he could go become a hardware engineer for making like 150K, right? But he wants to be a developer. I hope you guys enjoy it and can relate to what it's like to be in the process, uh, what it's like to be learning and struggling, and like he's still technically, I think that he's made it, but he doesn't feel like he's made it yet, and I don't think anyone ever feels ready, and so I think that you guys could probably relate to this. Anyways guys, if you want to talk to Kyle, his name is Ace Mowdy in the Discord, he has a panda icon, I'll put the link for the Discord, you can join that, it's down there in the description below. If you like this video, hit that thumbs up. If you want to see more, hit that subscribe button, check that little bell. I guess a lot of people don't get these notifications, but anyways, guys, I'll see you in the next one. All right, so this is Kyle, or Ace Mowdy, in the Discord. This is a little bit of a different video. Most of the videos I do, the interviews are like, he finished boot camp and got a job in three months, and these are his projects. I figured we'd do something a little bit different, a little bit kind of like in progress. Basically, his plan is to work his way up through the company to gain the dev skills rather than do boot camp. I mean, you're self-taught because that's, they keep giving you skills. Whenever they throw something at you, you're like, I got this, whatever. And that's forced you to learn. You've been basically offered a dev position if you can complete a certain dev task, right? Basically, yes. It, it seems like it's a, um, a trials and tribulations kind of thing where, okay, this isn't the coding challenge, but if you could build this using our production stuff, you're on the team, which that's like my mindset of it. That's your strategy behind this whole thing. Yeah. You're like, I'm just going to yeah. say yes and yes and yes. Yeah. And I'll do whatever you want until I get to where yeah. I want to go. Where did you start? I want to say cable guy, but you can clarify that. Basically, yeah, my journey professionally was as a cable guy. Um, I was introduced to code in high school through high school's computer science. We programmed in Java and did a hackathon for HP for HP Code Wars. 
after that, I didn't touch code for three years because I thought just because I didn't go to college or anything, it was not doable, basically. Why did you choose to skip college? I chose to skip college because I challenged the status quo with things. I like to take the path that's less taken. And also, too, I didn't want to be in a bunch of financial debt or anything else. I had really bad grades coming out of high school, barely passed, which did not reflect intelligence whatsoever. But I just didn't get along with the school system, really. Out of high school, uh, Went to at and 18 years old, had no idea what life was about or anything. I worked there for about a year, and within that year, I gained skills that were ne- networking skills. After I got fired from at and luckily, my friend's dad, their company had a position that was open, and so I gave him my resume. He handed that off, and I stepped into an interview at 18, 19 years old, downtown Austin on the eighth floor, questioning why I was there, had absolutely no sleep because I was scared I wasn't gonna wake up. I interviewed and they liked me, so they hired me. So I got hired with my current company as a installation supervisor. So I still wasn't doing anything code related or anything else like that. When I was in that position, I actually got to work really closely with the software team. As you go down through the rabbit hole and you start looking through all these things, you start to understand really what that means. You're not gonna let anything stop you. You're not gonna let what anyone says or what anyone says stop you. And at the beginning, you'll have a lot of motivation. You'll have all this, like fire, like, yeah, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go build an app. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna go learn data structures and algorithms and blah, blah, blah. And so you have a lot of this, uh, momentum in the beginning. And then after about, I'd say a month and a month and a half, that momentum dies out. And that's the deciding factor. If you actually want to work in software or not is because now you don't have all that backburn motivation. You don't have all the momentum going now because you have all these things that you just dumped into your brain and then all of a sudden things don't make sense anymore you can't seem to get past you know say you can't get past doing loops and conditionals and things like that and now all of a sudden you're just questioning like oh my god maybe this isn't for me you know what was i thinking and blah 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 so your it supervisor and you moved up now you're like how you do everything Uh, from from installation supervisor i went to a maintenance technician and it's not just hardware you get to start playing around with software and you get to jump into these linux servers and you get to do some command line things and i was like that's where i want to be that's where i need to go what you get to start doing is troubleshooting software Um, at a very very high level you do a check to make sure that all processes are running Uh, you do a check to see if anything's hung up you have a diagnostics tool and whatnot so that's kind of where i wanted to go which is great and then also i found out our cameras are just linux boxes you can ssh into them takes a username and password boom command line and so now you get to start doing some command line things the only thing i ever did was a a reboot and it, it's not proprietary it's just shut down tack r now i was like this is getting me a step further because now i'm getting to understand my company's software i was working on a production environment and if something breaks you got to fix it and you start to realize you can't be scared about breaking something. Everyone's gonna break something, something's gonna happen. A lot of this fear and these mental blocks kind of go away. And then it really hit hard whenever February of 2018, my regional manager put me in a position that was called a systems analyst. So I work in tolling. So for instance, your vehicle goes through the tolling plaza. What we do is you capture your tag, we get your axles, we get your license plate, we take images of you, great. There has to be a workflow for that. So that starts from all the hardware that's actually in the toll plaza that goes to machines that are servers. And then those servers send that data off to basically the main hub of whichever office it may be or whatever the case may be. So I was also in charge of preventing liquidation damage. And all this was driven by data. I immediately went over and started researching entry-level data analysis tools and anything that had to do with entry-level data analysis. The stepping stones in the order were playing in Excel and then writing SQL and then going into Python. So that's exactly what I did. Um, I started working with data inside of Excel, doing pivot tables and also doing dash reporting in Excel. After I got decent with that, I ended up hitting a point where I had to start learning a language of some sort because I was consuming too much data to pull from our system. And so I got to move into the downtown office. And once that happened, kind of just blew up from there. I started learning Visual Basic. I learned SQL. I learned Python. I was writing in Bash. I was writing in PowerShell. I had written a C-sharp script. I know in one of your videos, you talked about you made your own position and you found your own work and you did your own things. That's basically what I did. So 
in operations, there's all these issues that are up here that are like high priority issues. But then you have issues that are down here that are still important that need to get fixed, but nobody has time to fix. And that's what I started doing, just knocking them off one by one. Like, what can I do with my current skill set? Or what is a little bit above me, but I can fill that gap. And then once I fill that gap, I'll have more skills, basically. So you learned a whole lot of skills, C Sharp, scripting, Python, SQL. Mm-hmm. What does that look like on a day to day? They just like a day to day. They just let you Google uh, all that stuff. They don't care what you're doing. Uh, like yeah. So the reality is, when it comes to development, when you pull the curtain and you see all the magic that's going on behind everything, for any corporation or any big business that's not a startup, nobody knows what they're doing. They have an idea as to what they're doing, but nobody knows. Everyone uses Stack Overflow. Everyone's going onto forums and asking questions. There's lane side devs that go on the forums and onto like Linux forums and say, hey, I have this issue. I have no idea how to fix this. Does anybody, has anybody ran into this? And the reason why is because you don't know what you don't know. Whenever you go to interview and whenever you get hired, they're hiring you mostly because it's okay. You have aptitude, you have skills, and you have potential for growth. And you're probably teachable if you did it by yourself. So if you do the culture fit and all that other stuff, blase, blase, and now you're there and you're like, oh my God, I don't know what I'm doing. Nobody knows what they're doing unless they've been doing it for about, uh, I'd say three years. And the reason why is because it takes you six months to understand what you're doing. It takes you another six months to know what you're doing. And it takes you about another six months to a year to get good at what you're doing. And that's going to be for any job you walk into or anything that you do, because every company's workflow is different. Everyone's technology stack is different. But if you have these fundamental building blocks, you'll be okay. Stick to your building blocks, stick to your knowledge, own your knowledge, and you'll be good. Everybody uses online resources on the job. You're not going to get fired because you don't know how to do this one thing or you didn't solve something in one hour. We have somebody that works with us who they have really good theory, but then their execution, they freeze, they get locked up. We got the systems analyst position. He's just like, hey, we need you to do this thing. Were you just like, all right, I'm going to go do some Udemy at work. Like what did that? So in the beginning, yes, my company allows learning on the job if it's directly applicable to what you do it's like it's okay for you to google things which is great but what if you're somebody that's really good at emulating what somebody else does and then you can do it and then you go from there you can't just pull up youtube in the middle of the downtown office because then you get all these weird looks as in like um what are you doing but for some reason google and stack overflow is okay so and most of the time, Stack Overflow is wrong. You got to tweak things. Basically, yes. had to stick to text-based learning on the job. So you're just yes. googling to learn Python, and so you weren't like doing actual uh, like. Well, I learned Python on my own time, and that was the other thing. Um, being that I was given this position, ultimately, two things had to happen. I was gonna have to do some outside learning, which I accepted, and also whatever I learned outside, I needed to directly apply as soon as I could so that that sticks and I could continue to move on and continue to grow. Um, If you don't do that, nothing's gonna stick and you're going to have a slow, agonizing growing process because you're going to be trying to cram information into your brain on the job. You're not really gonna know what your code is doing and then when something breaks or you got a bug, you're not gonna know how to fix the bug because you're not gonna understand how the language works to begin with because you're not taking the time to understand the fundamentals. So for other people out there, like let's just like graduating high school, 18 years old, what would you say? Like if you had advice, if they wanted to jump into a company and work their way up a company, get those skills and then move so they don't have to be stay at home, full-time Udemy, full-time Treehouse, full-time whatever, how would you recommend they go about that? What kind of companies or tips? Maybe That's it's the wrong tough. question. No, it's not really the wrong question. Um, it's kind of tough, but there is an answer to that. And I would say, suck it up buttercup you're gonna have to do the grunt work you're gonna have to go and be the cable rat you're gonna be lowest man on the totem pole there is no escaping that if you're just graduating for instance when i was working at AT at&t starting pay was 18 dollars an hour i was 18 years old making 18 dollars an hour which was way more money than anyone that graduated in my class was making so land that first job get that first stamp after you do that, and it needs to be in something technical. Doesn't matter if it's a net admin, a entry level net admin, level one net admin, sys admin, a cable guy, IT guy, 
does not matter. Get the stamp, get your foot and the door and the industry. After that, start learning the niche that you want to work in. And the reason why is because it's easier to look for a job when you have a job.